Okay, Mr. Jeff and I are going to go ahead and shoot set eight, front, side, and back. That way you've got a, a good breakdown in this self-defense set. So eight from the front is from a tackle. Now, a lot of people want to start from like 50 miles away, but literally if he started running at me from this far away, I'd probably just move out of the way, right? Or, or I'd have a punch waiting for him on the way in or something of that nature. So it's probably more happening from fingertip kind of distance where he's going to just basically drop down to shoot in. And I've got to quickly space back and create, create that, uh, that gap between us. Okay. If he's driving his right shoulder, I'm going to use my right forearm to set a perimeter. So the biggest thing I'm doing is getting that right foot out of the way and I'm setting a perimeter here so he can't reach back and grab that right knee. Now, obviously he can reach my left knee from here. So I'm going to have to use my arms to defend that. And all I'm going to do here basically is sweep from my right knee out past my left knee and collect that arm. Okay. And that in and of itself, if he keeps driving in, I'll just flatten out and we'll basically do kind of an ugly sprawl. Okay, which is not the prettiest thing in the world. Um, but it's a lot of what you'll see in an MMA type situation is a sprawl, they'll shoot back and sprawl. The reason we don't do that in a self-defense situation is I don't get to control the surface, number one. Number two, I don't get to fight necessarily just one opponent. So I might be doing a great sprawl on Mr. Jeff and choking him unconscious and being the king of all jujitsu when his buddy runs up and cowboy boots me in the ear and then I'm a vegetable, right? So, uh, so it's a little different mindset. We want to stay on our feet strictly. If he does get a leg, your primary, your, your option really there is to make that sprawl happen, to go ahead and slam that sprawl as hard as you can. And I kind of did like an ugly... Um, controlled sprawl, but but if he gets a hold of the leg, the best thing you can do is drop um, as hard and as and as uh, definitively as you can to take him down. But we're gonna we're gonna pretend that our goal is to stay on our feet because we may have multiple attackers. So when he shoots in, I'm gonna drop back, post, and control that arm. Now if he goes lower, I have to go lower, and I need to go lower from the knees, not from the back. So you see a lot of squatting going on here. Okay, so from that set position, I checked him i'm going to grab hold of whatever i can get hold of here i'm going to take my free hand my right hand and cup the back of his head what i want to do is i want to pull him on the line that's perpendicular to his feet so i'm going to hook the back of his head and yank him this way into this gap between his feet and myself and as i do i'm going to pivot my right foot out of the way so he has a place to fall rolling his head through to control him and then just check with my knee and punch okay so that's somebody i i don't want to maim if we do it from the other side, you can see the same setup. So he shoots in, I drop back, keeping my hips at or below his hips, keeping my elbow down so he can't duck under it. Catch the back of the head, break balance slightly. And then once I feel him come with me, I'm gonna step out of the way and roll him right into that position and then control and strike. If he's adamant about staying on his feet, he's gonna try to drive up. And what's gonna tend to happen is I'm not gonna get to tuck his head under so genteely and control where he falls. He's more gonna face plant. Right. And it's just going to kind of drive his face in the floor. He knows better than that. Right. And, and because we're partners, I'm taking better care of him than that. But just one of the questions is always, well, what if they really push hard? Truth is, you'll still get your job done. Not so nice for him. He'll end up on his face instead of on his back. Right. And that end up having uh, having kissed the pavement pretty hard. So that's kind of what we want to avoid. So at speed, if he shoots in, I just post quickly, move out of the way and just gently. I mean, not gently, but uh kind of smoothly redirect him and it's a pretty simple takedown cool thank you sir big thing i ate from the side he's got me in a headlock okay number one putting my hand up here is basically a reflex it's not going to stop him from punching the heck out of me it might stop his knuckles from cutting me so bad so it's going to blunt the blow a little bit but it's not going to stop it um, number two, I'm not going to overpower him in this position. He's got a lot more strength here. So I have to change his position. So the first thing I'm going to do is bring a hand up almost at the exact same time. I'm going to bring my other hand up like over the top of the, the uh, shoulder between me and him. This space is real important. I see a lot of people put their hand over here. This doesn't help you a bit. It's got to be between me and him, right? Next thing I want to do is change his position. So I'm going to take my thigh and I'm going to drive it to the back of his thigh. So my toes essentially end up even with his toes. At the same time, I'm going to hook his chin and pull back. So I'm going to drive the right foot forward, checking his hip out from under him as I begin to pull back. From there, I'm going to strike to the stomach or the groin and you can choose just how uh, unpleasant you want to be. When we go to throw, it's important that I straighten my right hand here out completely. Otherwise, he'll stay hooked to me. So as I go to throw, I'm going to sweep through and push that hand down straight, bringing his hand off my, uh, off my neck. And then from there, I slide up to check, bang, and punch. Okay. Um, 
just so you can see it from us. I think which way I want that to go. <sighs> well, let's just say we're starting kind of here, a little bit of a different angle, so like 45 would be great. If he does not let go, if I'm not strong enough to break that grip, I move in here, bang, and he continues to hang on. So I try to drive the foot out and we go down. I'm not in a terrible spot. I've still, I've got basically a side position, right? And he's rolled up on one shoulder and I can drive that head down and I can start to work against the arm, et cetera. Um, but I really don't want to be on the deck if I can avoid it. So driving that hand straight through is going to be important. I just want people to know, you know, what if the guy's so strong that he, that he hangs on or what if he's holding on with both hands? Well, then you're going to hit the floor together and you're going to be in the dominant position. So you go into uh, kind of a strike mode and a, and a heavy contact mode at that point. OK, so kind of more live if he grabs me so you can see the whole thing. I'm going to cover, grab, break balance, strike, finish the throw, putting him down, bang, and then punch. OK. Eight from the back. Eight from the back, he's going in for a full Nelson. So what he wants to do is drive it underneath, put pressure against the back of my head and neck, and cause me some damage on the neck. Now, first, I want to stop this before it happens, right? So as he starts to shoot in, I do, we call it tickle defense, which sounds kind of funny. But if you ever have to tickle somebody, how they drop their elbows in tight and trap your hands, it's exactly what I'm doing. At the same time, I'm going to reach across with my uh, outside hand. So they're kind of neutral at this point, but I'm crossing my body to my left grabs his right. Catch that wrist. I'm going to rotate back towards him. My right foot's going to slide slightly so I get range of motion to throw that elbow strike. Right. Then from there, I'm going to take a step out with my left foot, turning my body over. I'm going to roll that shoulder up or his wrist up on top of my shoulder so his elbow is trapped. And then from there, I'm going to step through, bringing his shoulder behind his center of gravity. Take two more steps to put him on the deck. Right. Then from there, my right hand's free bang, to strike. Let's do that without my body in the way so much. Uh, yeah, let's do it from here. Good. So if we do it this, this way, I'm going to trap, grab, shift slightly when I go to strike, step out as I go to, sorry, as I go to control that elbow. And if you, if you uh, get the little lucky clip in there where you catch me the elbow, that's a plus, right? Then three steps. One to break balance, two, three to finish the takedown. Once he's on the deck, I want to stack him on his side as much as possible, bring this hand out, bang, there's my strike. And then I can step away. Okay, so it's a pretty quick little takedown. Uh, a couple things about the position. If I go here, here, and up, once I get here with my partner, it's really important I stay in plane. So I continue to take him straight back that way. If I didn't care how he landed, I would probably rotate on the way down and take his shoulder sideways. But that's gonna tear the shoulder up quite a bit. Um, so in class, be very cognizant that you wanna take him straight back so that you go with the greatest range of motion for that joint. Um, in a practical sense, you might not need to go in the greatest range of motion for the joint. Okay, so kind of at speed, if he goes in, I just trap, quick pop, step right through, and it's that quick to put him on the deck. Um, so it's a pretty fast takedown, and it does not require a lot of strength from me. What it really requires is just overpowering his shoulder, which, you know, I'm using my whole upper body to do that, so I've, I've got a pretty good chance. All right, that's that eight. Thank you, sir. Hope that helps.